Abraham Lincoln's appearance was a subject of controversy during his presidential campaign, but photographer Matthew Brady's edited picture helped dispel the notion of his ugliness and ultimately contributed to his election. Following Lincoln's assassination, a portraitist improvised by superimposing his face onto another person's portrait to create a heroic image, a deception that went unnoticed for a hundred years. Gelia Markizova, the little Buryat girl who became an icon of happy childhood after hugging Stalin in a viral photograph, faced a tragic fate. Her father was arrested and executed during the Great Purge, and her mother was exiled and likely killed by the NKVD. Gelia went from being a celebrity to being shunned as the daughter of an enemy of the people, leading officials to change her name to Mamlakat Nakangova. Before Abraham Lincoln became one of America's greatest presidents, his 1860 presidential campaign faced a challenge, rumors that he was grotesquely ugly. In an era where photography was not widely spread, his opponents spread rumors about his appearance, describing him as the leanest, lankiest, most ungainly mass of legs, arms, and hatchet face ever strung upon a single frame. To combat this, Lincoln turned to photographer Matthew Brady to capture his image and prove his opponents wrong. In a revolutionary move for its time, photographer Matthew Brady strategically lit Abraham Lincoln's face and touched up the photo to address rumors of his ugliness and ungainliness. The resulting image became widely disseminated and played a significant role in securing Lincoln's presidential campaign. Additionally, portraitist Thomas Hicks later manipulated a heroic pose image of extreme racist John C. Calhoun by swapping in Lincoln's head, a deception that went unnoticed for a century. On February 23, 1945, a larger American flag was raised atop Mount Suribachi on the volcanic island of Iwo Jima during World War II. Associated Press photographer Joe Rosenthal almost missed capturing the iconic moment as he scrambled to find a better vantage point, but managed to capture the shot that would become one of history's most famous photographs. Rosenthal's photo of the flag raising at Iwo Jima became one of the greatest shots of all time, but the subjects of the photo faced tragic fates. President Roosevelt wanted to use the photo for publicity, but before anyone knew it, two of the subjects were killed in action, followed by a third. Despite the heartbreaking aftermath, Rosenthal's iconic image won a Pulitzer and was later immortalized as a bronze sculpture at the Iwo Jima Memorial. Che Guevara's iconic photo, taken by Alberto Corda in 1960, was initially overshadowed by shots of Fidel Castro at a funeral in Havana. However, it gained worldwide fame when an Italian brought it to light becoming a powerful symbol of revolution and rebellion. In 1942, the Japanese invaded the Malay Peninsula and swiftly captured the fortress city of Singapore, surprising the British who believed their foes were jungle fighters. However, the Japanese won not because of their natural aptitude for jungle combat, but because of their experienced troops, innovative tactics, and the British commander's underestimation of the terrain. The images of the surrender with British commander Lieutenant General Arthur Percival carrying the Union Jack and an aide holding a white flag shattered the illusion of British invincibility and contributed to the decline of Britain's colonial fortunes in Asia. During the Great Depression, a photograph called Lunch atop a skyscraper stood out from the gloomy images of the era. Taken in 1932, it showed 11 iron workers casually enjoying their lunch break on a steel girder high above Manhattan, 
symbolizing American resilience and daring. Although it was later revealed to be a staged publicity stunt for the Rockefeller Center, the image still provided a rare moment of positivity during a time of hardship. In 1945, Photographer Yevgeny Kaldai arrived in Berlin with a Leica camera and a homemade Soviet flag. On May 2, he captured the iconic photo raising a flag over the Reichstag, showing two Red Army soldiers raising the flag atop the symbol of Nazism, the Reichstag, after years of brutal fighting and sacrifice. Jean Bedel Bokassa, a military dictator of the Central African Republic, declared himself emperor and bankrupted his country with a lavish coronation. His rule was marked by terror as he oversaw the torture of political opponents and even fed their corpses to animals in his private zoo. Accusations of cannibalism and the arrest of schoolchildren led to his downfall and he ultimately died in poverty after being released from prison. During World War II, British intelligence came up with Operation Bodyguard to deceive the Germans. They aimed to hide the invasion's time and date, convince the Germans of a landing in Pas de Calais instead of Normandy, and keep the Germans defending the Pas de Calais even after the Normandy landings. As part of this plan, Operation Fortitude created a fictional first U.S. Army group under General George Patton using fake radio traffic and inflatable dummy tanks and transports to deceive German spy planes. German intelligence was deceived by fake reports and double agents, leading them to believe that the Pas de Calais was the intended target for invasion. As a result, they kept their units there instead of reinforcing Normandy giving the Allies valuable time to establish a strong foothold before liberating France and Western Europe. Stjepan Filipovic, a Croatian metal worker turned activist, defied the Nazis until his last breath. Born in 1916, he joined the workers' movement in 1937, was imprisoned for his political activity, and upon release, joined the Communist Party. When Germany invaded Yugoslavia in 1941, Filipovic volunteered to fight as a partisan against the Nazis and was stationed in Serbia. Stjepan Filipovic, a fearless leader in the partisan movement, was captured by the Nazis and sentenced to be publicly hanged. In his final moments, he defiantly raised his hands in a powerful pose, urging the crowd to fight against fascism. This iconic photograph immortalizes his bravery and serves as a lasting tribute to his heroism. Luftschiffbau Zeppelin, founded by Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin in 1908, designed airships that were used as strategic bombers in WWI. The sight of these giant Zeppelins over London and the efforts to bring them down became iconic, but they also had civilian applications, with the German Airship Transport Company transporting passengers and becoming history's first airline to earn revenue from aircraft. Daylog had achieved great success with its Zeppelins flying passengers for three decades and covering over a million miles without any injuries. However, their optimism for the future was shattered when the Hindenburg, their flagship airship, tragically burst into flames during a routine docking in 1937. In just 37 seconds, the Hindenburg, the world's largest airship, was engulfed in flames resulting in the deaths of 36 people. The catastrophic event, captured on film and widely circulated, not only shattered public confidence in airship travel, but also brought an end to the airship era and dealt a blow to the fortunes of Delag, the company behind the Hindenburg. On August 1, 1943, 177 American B-24 Liberator 
heavy bombers embarked on a daring mission to destroy Hitler's oil supply in Plosti. Despite maintaining radio silence and flying at low altitudes to avoid detection, a series of unfortunate events, including a navigation error and a crashed lead navigator, ultimately led to the failure of the raid. Capturing the intense chaos of the moment, dramatic photos depict low-flying B-24 Liberators over Ploesti as they faced a barrage of anti-aircraft fire and enemy fighters. Out of the 177 bombers that took off, only 162 made it to Ploesti, with 53 being shot down and 660 crewmen lost. Despite the destruction, Ploesti's oil complex was swiftly repaired and soon exceeded its pre-raid production levels. During World War II, the crew of the Dutch warship HNLMS Abraham Kreinsen came up with an ingenious plan to disguise their ship as a tropical island. This allowed them to sail undetected through Japanese-controlled waters for hundreds of miles until they reached safety in Australia. The Kreinsen, a small minesweeper, devised a plan to disguise itself as a tropical island in order to avoid detection by the powerful Imperial Japanese Navy. Its crew cut down vegetation and covered the ship's entire surface area with tropical foliage to effectively camouflage it from Japanese planes. The crew of the Abraham Kreinsen risked their lives to avoid detection by the Japanese, covering the deck with vegetation and painting exposed metal to resemble an island. After eight terrifying days, the plucky minesweeper reached safety in Fremantle, Western Australia, becoming the last Allied vessel to successfully escape the disastrous defeat in the Java Sea and the Dutch East Indies. Hitler's attempt to capture a triumphant photograph in front of the Eiffel Tower was foiled by workers who sabotaged the structure, denying him the satisfaction of gloating over his conquest of the City of Lights. Hitler's dream of admiring Paris from atop the Eiffel Tower was foiled by members of the French resistance who cut the lift cables, forcing him to climb 1,500 steps in his 50s. Unable to make the strenuous climb, Hitler settled for a photo with the iconic symbol of Paris instead. 